it is almost 50 years to the day. The last time Israel was officially at war in what is known as the Yom Kippur War back in 1973 when she was attacked by Egypt, Syria and others. But this is a different kind of war. Thousands of rockets rained on Israel from multiple directions and Hamas gunmen invaded by land, sea and sky. Now, thousands of people have been murdered and injured. This attack is simply without precedent. Egypt, Syria, Saudi Arabia and Iran. These countries are the worst enemy of Israel, as you can see all of these. Countries are Muslim countries, so basically it's a war between God and Satan, who is Hamas. They're a terrorist organization funded by Iran. Iran has for a long time stated that their objective is to destroy Israel. They have also signaled that they are developing a nuclear weapon. In the past they have threatened to wipe Jerusalem from the map of the world. The Bible predicted, thousand off years ago, that the end time events would revolve around Jerusalem, not San Francisco, not Los Angeles, not Moscow, not Paris, but Jerusalem, this tiny little city, in this tiny sliver of land, will play a key role in the events of the last days. God says, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try to move it, but they will only hurt themselves. Think you can make a very good case for that. If you get out a map of the Middle East and look to the north of Israel, you will find Russia. Why would Russia ever want to invade Israel? Well, there's another thing the Bible says about Magog. If she's indeed Russia, and that one of her allies that will march with her is Persia. Persia is the ancient name for modern Iran. So the Bible predicted hundreds of years ago that this large force from the north of Israel would attack her after she was regathered, and one of the allies that would attack Israel with Russia or Magog, whoever it is, would be Iran or Persia. Not once in the past, 2,500 years, has Russia formed a military alliance with Persia, Iran, but they have recently developed a special connection. Russia has signed billion-dollar deals to sell missiles to Iran, and the Iranians have helped the Russians, providing them with drones, weaponized drones to use in the Ukraine war. Am I saying with absolutely certainty? This is the scenario that will play out. No. But if you get up in the morning and read this headline, Russia attacks Israel, fasten your seatbelt, because you're seeing Bible prophecy fulfilled in your lifetime before your very eyes. The future of Israel in the New Testament, the future destiny of the nation, is outlined in great detail in Revelation 12, and also found in other passages throughout the final book of the Bible. When we realize that Israel has already become a nation that is generally in unbelief toward Christ, and that virtually the whole world is already anti-Israel, it is not hard to realize that the Lord is setting the stage for tribulation events that will focus on that tiny nation that the Lord loves. Many comparisons are being made today between the conditions in the Muslim world and the mentality of the Nazis toward the Jews in the 1930s at the end of the day. Revelation 12 teaches us that it is a fight between God and Satan. Jesus said, Now when these things begin to happen, Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. That's what we need to be doing, looking for the soon return of Jesus Christ. But we also need to pray. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So let us pray that they arrive at some kind of peace. Pray that this horrific terrorism stops, and that they're able to get their hostages back. Let us pray that God places his hand of protection on the nation of Israel during this unprecedented war.